Howdy folks. Uh, usually when I go yard sale hopping, I look at tools, hand tools, and you know, certain, you know, the guy stuff, right? This was in a corner at a yard sale last weekend, and uh, it was like, it's one of those things you see in life and you like a Marshall guitar amp, like they are so expensive, uh, I wasn't even gonna ask. So my wife asked the, the uh, gal that was running the yard sale, she says, you know, how much is that? Gal said, well, there's something wrong with it. So his, her boyfriend, husband, whatever says, you know, 50 bucks. The nameplate's worth 50 bucks. I'll take it, yeah. So today, uh, we're gonna try to troubleshoot it and figure out what's wrong. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> Okay, we're back. Now, uh, guitar amplifier, even as pretty as this one looks, it's not rocket science. Yeah, there's it's some pretty basic things going on. So, uh, first off, we're going to plug it in so that it has power. There you go, a little red light comes on. We can power this thing up. The uh, problem was, uh, first off, the, it's, it's an on again, off again problem. So, it was like when I banged it around, bring it home, when I got to the house, I plugged it in, I couldn't find anything wrong with it. And of course, I only checked it for a couple of minutes and then I left it uh, for a couple of days. Come back and it was like, okay, now it's not working. Ah, now we do have a problem. But, so when the troubleshoot start, starts up, the very first thing was, you know, does it come on or does it not? And it, yeah, it comes on. So we know we got power. Also hear the speakers down below and they sound pretty good. They don't come and go. The, you know, speakers are kind of like light bulbs. When they burn out, they, it's over, you know, it's, it's game over. So the troubleshooting problem we've got is up here in the head, obviously, and from banging around, it was like, okay, so at least on the good side, we don't need parts or anything. Something is loose. Uh, probably a bad piece of solder in here someplace. And that's probably all it is, you know? So that's, that's really good news because it means I don't have to order any parts. I, I like it already, you know? But uh, what's happening here with this one was you can crank the master volume up and down and you can hear the hum sort of, you know, go up and down with it. So obviously there's no problem with the, the main part of the amp is working. So there's no sound, like why? Now, one of the first things I do with any amplifier for troubleshooting is after I get a plug powered up, I do this with my fingers and just sort of tap all the little pots here. If you hear any crispy, crunchy, you know, uh, what we call Rice Krispies noises, anything, you know, staticky like going on with this, you know right away you've got bad potentiometer problems right here in the knobs and that's that's where you're gonna have to go dig you know to see what which one it is and you know maybe replace it and solder it off the board and everything it's it gets a little hairy at that point but we've got good speakers these are solid absolutely rock solid so there's nothing going on here and also tested these switches back and forth wow I don't know okay that was the different channel select Wow, that's got quite a sound to it. But it uh, again, it's working, so it's like, yes. Now right now, the problem is, when I started this this morning, it wasn't working. There was no guitar sound at all. So that's back, it's working again. So, but I, we need to dig in and find out what, when it stops, why does it stop, where's, where's the stop problem? And this is actually, I gotta give Fender, or sorry, Fender. I gotta give Marshall a really good a thumbs up on this one. This sucker is easy to fix, easy to troubleshoot, easy to check it out. So let's find out why, because you can get it apart real easy and you can still hook it up and run tests. I like that. So we're going to uh, shut it off, pull the uh, guitar plug out. I'm gonna unplug the amp. And this particular one here, um, it's really funny because the way it's hung up in the front here, but at the back there's no support. So when you take these screws out, this thing's going to kind of cattywampus and fall on you. The other thing we've got going on back here, I'll show you the back side of this thing, is this is another good design really. This is the uh, speaker jack, so we can unplug the speakers from the system. All we got to do is drop this and get it out of there. Now, to do that, uh, I think the easiest way to do it is to put this thing on its side and slip it out sideways because then you're not fighting gravity here. You know, let gravity just drag on one side. And I don't see any reason for it to catch or be a problem. It's actually tighter, actually, over here on this side. 
and there's a gap on this side. So again, we'll take the six screws out of the top and we should be able to pull the whole amp at that point. Before I get too far, uh, the other thing I forgot to mention was I checked these, uh, the jacks, the input and output jacks and stuff, just to make sure, but uh, the speakers are picking up the hum or frequency change as you're accelerating the amp. So the main power part of the amp is working. There is no issues there at all. However, uh, I also checked the uh, input where the guitar jack goes in. A lot of times that's where the problem is, but putting the jack in and out, there was absolutely no signal, no indication at all that the guitar jack was even being put in the, to the amp. And uh, Marshall has these things are integrated like soldered right into the board these days. They're not like the old ones from the, uh, the, old, the good old days when you could uh, check the wiring right at the uh, jack and stuff and sometimes replace the jack or something. So the jack could be the problem, but uh, I highly don't think so. I think it's in the preamp stage of the amp and then that's, we're just losing no signal and it goes off and it's just gotta be some, I'm gonna say a loose piece of solder, just a bad solder connection somewhere in the motherboard. And all we gotta do is find it. And once we find that bad solder spot, just put a little solder or something on there and hopefully we can fix this. Now to get this out of here, I'm gonna put the amp up on its side, take the six screws out and we'll see if we can slide this out of here. Now, this is what makes this uh, a pretty nice amp to have to repair. <laughs> Come on. I'm gonna set her back up, plug everything back in, put the amp up on top, and run the amp open so I have access to all the circuitry, up, say up here, including the uh, guitar, the power, and everything back on, and we'll check it up here, and we can look right at the circuitry, you know, and see if something's going on. Okay, in order to see things, uh, I turned the amp around a little bit after I did that. I also set the uh, box down below on the workbench, and I'm just gonna sort of close in on the amplifier a little bit. And we're gonna zoom in a little bit so you can really get a look at this uh, circuitry. And then we'll start the uh, troubleshooting process, I guess. Yeah, right about, uh, how's that look? Not too bad? You can see what's going on. Okay, before I get any further, warning, warning. Uh, do not try this at home. I'm a professional. Okay, so I, I had to say that because this is live circuitry. There is power in here. There's enough power in here that uh, it could hurt you or even do something worse than that. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is switch this system back on now that we're all hooked up again. And again, I hear the speakers nice and crunchy, but no. Oh. Yep, and the amp is on. So I'm gonna get a, uh, we're gonna take a probe and go across the circuits right here at the beginning and check these and see if we can hit something or find out where this, where this problem is coming from. Okay, now we took our meter. This is just a general meter that uh, you get out of Amazon. It's actually a nice unit, I like it. And I'm not actually using the meter, I'm just using the probe of the meter. And I was going across the amplifier and one of the things I like to do with it on like this right now is just tap on the capacitors and you know knock them. Make sure every every capacitor is tight, it's soldered in well. I don't hear anything funny, you know, suddenly changing sound or you know something going on. And I got over here. This is again the preamp stage of this amp coming in. And you got a couple of diodes here, so I knock, push them around a little bit with the probe, just touching them, you know, and it's like nothing's happening. And all of a sudden, I hit this one right here. And you can hear that. I don't know if you can make that out very good, but boy, all of a sudden, bang, the amplifier comes on. Yeah. So we've got, it may not be a bad diode, but we have a bad solder connection or the diode's no good, one or the other, because that seems to be, that's exactly where the problem's coming from. Nothing else here around it is affected by me pushing around or bumping or touching anything. So at least we have that. A lot of times, I've, I've got everything unplugged right now, so, you know, we, we're powered down. Uh, a lot of times, I just do a visual before I get into really heavy troubleshooting. And I saw something, and I'm going to show it to you right here. I'm going to point it out with the probe or something, maybe. Uh, I've seen, you see it right here. See this capacitor? It is pulled over and almost yanked out of its socket. And the reason that happened was when they put this board in place, and they pushed it down in, it caught the capacitor and pulled it over. So we need to fix that too. That's another issue that I'm just seeing. That's, this goes back to when this thing was assembled. I don't know if we can get this up out of here easily or not. It's uh, 
Looks like a fairly easy board to just pull out. Okay, uh, I shoved the capacitor back out of the way once I got this uh, one, I got the board off. And like I said, it's kind of like a like a slot here with the uh, pieces here, like kind of like a computer board here where it just pushes into this. But while I've got this off, I'm just taking a quick look around, feeling for heat or anything stupid going on here. Uh, this looks like it's pretty tight. I don't like that capacitor up against that like that. It's a lot of vibration in a uh, guitar amplifier. I mean, duh, you know, of course there is. So I do like to check everything and just make sure, but everything else looks good. So we're going to slap this back in place, but now we're going to try not to pull the capacitor down like they did and see if we can get this punch back in without breaking it. There, I'm going to have to put my hands underneath the board actually to support it because, like I said, Marshall did not do a very good deal here with supporting this part of the, the preamp or, you know, we'll call it the preamp stage or area right in here. But, okay, that's all tight. This capacitor seems to be okay. He did a, he survived that terrible hit, but he was dragged up underneath it and it was right here. So, you know, uh, the only thing I'm worried about is I put a little bit of heat on the diode. See if we can get the capacity, you know, see if we can get everything working. Uh, we'll just do a quick plug back in. We'll jack the gu guitar back in. Yeah, still working. Uh, I can't play anything because YouTube will copyright strike me for it. So we'll just strum. That's all we can do, right? Uh, uh, everything's working. So I'm going to put this back in the cabinet for now. And hopefully that holds together. If it ever quits, we know exactly where to look or where the problem is coming from. I'm hoping that that little bit of heat with the soldering iron did the trick on it because I just touched the side of the, uh, down the, you know, where it goes down through the board to try to get to it because the problem with the Marshall here is, uh, well, I thought about it, but I would have to cut the steel plate away from underneath in order to access it. Otherwise, we have this huge, horrendous job to take all this wiring off undo all these potentiometers to remove the board so we can actually work on the board. The easier way would be just cut the metal open and uh, have a little, you know, maybe even have a little grill that bolts in and bolts out whenever you want to access all the soldering on that silly board. Again, that's just, you know, it's production thing, so it's like, eh, it is what it is. Now we got to get this back in that cabinet. Easy peasy. Okay, so the assembly is the opposite of what we did earlier and just I put it up on its side That way we're not fighting gravity to get this thing back in. There is a little bit of uh, sticky tape on the top of this assembly But it didn't stick. I don't know again One of those things now the speaker wires are now a bit of a problem But it just makes it a lot easier to just slide this thing in you know, and you're not fighting gravity to get it in. And then use your fingers, whatever, to sort of steer it towards the front. Yeah, there you go. Boom, it's in place. Yeehaw. Now, uh, carefully, see if you can locate the screws. And just sort of finger the amp around a little bit just to try to line up with uh Yeah, nothing. Easy peasy, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's see if we... Yeah, there we go. The amp is that way a little bit. It should be that way more. So that was my screw up. I guess I should have leaned it on the on this side. Apparently it would have made it easier for the screws to line up because the way it was assembled from Marshall. But we got it. Yep. So. There we go. Yeah, buddy. Plug the speakers back in. They're kind of a no-brainer. The left side cable goes to the left output. The left, the right side goes to the right output. So, no-brainer. Now that she's back in her cabinet and everything is back to normal again. Once again, I'll put the lines back on. Plug the guitar back in again. Turn the amp on, and hopefully. Fine, it's working great. Okay, we'll leave uh, we'll leave that alone, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stop messing with it. <laughs> but it seems to be working, working well for the time being. If there is a problem, we will definitely go in there and go after that diode because we now know in the preamp circuit that's where the problem was with this particular uh, make and model. Uh, if anybody has a Marshall having problems. Uh, 
This one is the MG 250DFX series. Just, you know, so anybody knows about that. There are uh, a number of different things that uh, does happen to a Marshall amp, but like I said, you can take them apart and if you have some electrical experience or abilities, uh, generally they're not that hard to fix because they're kind of a, it's not rocket science. There's a big amp in there, small preamp, everything else is a fix. It's not that tough to fix usually or troubleshoot. And I didn't take any voltage readings because there wasn't any point because I already knew the, the main amp was working. So, uh, in fact, that screw needs to be tightened up before I take this back in the house where the uh, air conditioning is. Man, it is just whew, <laughs> hot in here. Yeah, so now the truth about YouTube. This thing sat around for days in the house. It did not work, okay? <laughs> I brought it out here, put it up on the bench, and you and I were gonna go through this thing and try to find out where that signal loss was. Unfortunately, when I got it to the bench, it started working, <laughs> and so it, it was harder to troubleshoot that way, but when I hit that diode, it was definitely like, yeah, that's it. It's, it's coming on, so it's just a bad solder connection, and hopefully, you know, that's the end of it. That capacitor laying over, I don't think that was part of the interference problem, but we do have that issue fixed, and I checked the capacitor. It seems to be fine, so it, it did survive the uh, knockover. Anyways, uh, if you do have problems with Marshall, don't ask me, okay? Because, you know, it's, it's not, you know, it's not rocket science but there is some crazy things that can go wrong with a guitar amp, especially with all the vibration with the speakers like this in the same cabinet as the, the head. You can imagine how much it's like, you know, being in a small earthquake all the time, yeah. Uh, for 50 bucks, I think we're keeping her. And uh, my PV is now up for sale. <laughs> yes, I had a PV amp in the house here too, but again, yard sale, you know, but it worked great, you know. It wasn't like this situation here, you know, but uh, I guess, uh, comment if you would pay 50 bucks for an amp like that that doesn't work. <laughs> I would, anytime. You know. <laughs> and uh, the guitar, uh, if you've noticed, it's a uh, George Fullerton. Yeah, if you Google George Fullerton, you will find out the history behind Fender and the Stratocaster and what, what, that, is, what that guitar is all about. And that's a left-handed one. Yes, in case you didn't notice, yes, it is a left-handed. Yes, I am left-handed. Uh, yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's some old. This is I haven't worked on one of these for 40 years. 42, more than 40 years. Okay, but the technology is, doesn't look much different today than it did back then. <laughs> okay, we had tubes. Tubes were fun. You change the tubes and you know try again. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! Thank you so much for checking in. I'll stay at the garage, see what we're working on. This is what we're working on. Uh, we'll get back to some real stuff next week and get, get away from rock and roll here. <laughs> Thank everyone for viewing. And uh, love you guys, and we'll see you later. And I am out of here. Over and out. <laughs>